welcome back this is the morning bright focus show and if you are just joining us today is women chat wednesday one of my favorites i, I know i'm being biased but i know <laughs> i know but uh, i can't help it <laughs> all right but today we have an amazing amazing inspiring guest with us her name is pasta leah and she is going to talk to us on purpose and identity and i know this is one area that most if not all of us struggle through and when you get just tired of trying to find out you just go with the motions but that's not how it should be and that's not how you should live your life you should live a purposeful life and not just living for the sake of living yes right remember to join the conversation through our social media handles facebook focus tv kenya instagram focus tv underscore kenya and twitter at focus tv kenya so right away let's just get into the topic of the day pasta is it okay if i call you pasta <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. so pasta tell us a little bit about yourself okay well my name is leah or lee wanja it's like a stage name mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm a pastor i run a ministry called the grace well the grace well is a prayer ministry for women mm -hmm. and uh, i'm also a life coach and a counselor I talk a lot about purpose and identity. I feel like we are in a sort of a crisis where there are so many things that could define you in the world. There are so mm -hmm. many things that um, could uh, derail you from your purpose. Sure. And uh, therefore, I believe in helping people just the way somebody helped me to be able to discover my purpose. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, that's what I do. I'm also a mom of oh. a one little baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what is purpose? Well, purpose is what God created you for. It's what you were, you were put on earth to do. Whatever you believe about God, um, one thing that unites all of us is that we are not here just for being here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the world is uh, a design of a beautiful mind. And yes. therefore, the greatest uh, investment that God made on earth is to put us in it so that we could be able to establish something. And so purpose is discovering your unique fingerprint, what what uh, he intended for you to be able to do on earth, that is purpose. And purpose is unique for each and every one of us. We don't, none of us has the same, just the way we don't have the same fingerprint. Mm -hmm. Each of us has something unique that you were created to do. Mm -hmm. And one of the most freeing things is to be able to discover that thing that you were created to do. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. You talk about being free, like it liberates you. Yeah. In what, in what sense? Do you mean that? I think a lot of people move around life um, like guesswork. You want to try this, you want to try the other, you want to try yes, and see definitely. what is so work. true. That is right? so true. Yeah. And then as you try these different things, time begins to pass mm -hmm. and before you know it, it's all worked. You don't know what you're good at, you don't know what you're bad at, you don't know if it's the devil, mm -hmm. you don't know if it's God. Mm -hmm. I mean then you're just lost and you have no clue what is what. But once you discover exactly what God created you to do, then it helps you to be able to be very channeled, to be focused, to be able to see your challenges as a means to an end. Okay. So that everything that you do, even if you try one thing and it fails, you're able to say, that's okay, it served a certain purpose. Right. Because you know what exactly God created you to do. And I think that's very freeing because even when you go through challenges, you're able to see things more positively than somebody who doesn't know why they're on earth. That's true. true. Yeah. Wow. So um, are there any are there different categories of purpose or there's just one purpose? Uh, I think purpose is like a house, different rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has different mm -hmm. rooms. So when you get into a house, you probably get into a living room. Yes. And then as you discover about the house, then you walk into a kitchen as you discover more about the house you walk into a pantry or a store mm -hmm. then you get into a bedroom the more you live the more you live purposefully the more you discover your purpose i don't think it's something that you discover and it's like i know oh. and this is it okay. i think it's it's a work of like art it begins with one thing and slowly it comes together manifests yes. into something beautiful exactly wow. okay yes wow yeah so you're saying that um when i for example i'm trying to find out my purpose mm -hmm. i'll just find like a, a snippet of what my purpose looks like then work on it and get more and more and more 
Yeah, absolutely. I don't think any one pa person knows everything about themselves mm -hmm. because we are such an intricate design. We are such a complex design and made by an even more complex God. And so the more you, you, you delve into purposes, the more you begin to learn, okay, so this is it about myself, then soon you discover, oh, I can do something mm -hmm. more, I'm better at this, I'm good at this, I can do this for people. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is the fact that you have to know that you're not here for yourself. That's the basic wow. purpose. Wow. That you have to know none of us was put on earth just to feed ourselves, just to pay rent, just to amass okay. yes. wealth, yes. just yes. to build careers. Okay. We were all created for the benefits of other people wow. and more so the people who are going to come after we are gone. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And what is identity? Because purpose and identity to me seems like a similar thing. Yeah, well, it's similar, but um, well, purpose is knowing what you were created to do. Identity is knowing who you are. Wow. wow. Yeah, and okay. I f think identity is quite um, interesting because if you do not know who you are, even if you knew what you were created to do, but be able to fit into that place because your your view of yourself is distorted. And wow. as long as you don't see yourself in the right way, I think many of us are very... Uh, humble, you know, like you see yourself as less, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> less than you are. You know, people say um, that is humility. I don't think so. False humility. It is there. False humility. Okay. And you know, false humility is pride, and pride can easily masquerade as humility. So oh, okay, so pride isn't necessarily bringing yourself up. It's also pretending. Yeah. To yeah. be lower. Yeah. yeah, pride can okay. also be pretending to be lower because the minute that you don't want to step up to do what exactly God called you to be, you want to lay back. What you're trying to say is I'm too good for this thing mm -hmm. or I'm too, I don't have to stretch out, I don't have to go out, I don't have to exert myself. I just lay back and let things happen because I don't need your... Yeah. Yeah. So you're being that's selfish. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah. And like you've said, purpose is not about yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. It's about serving people. Yes. yes. Well, so if, if, for example, I've I sat down and I thought about my purpose and my purpose was mostly linking it to myself, mm -hmm. getting a better life, getting a... Uh, mm -hmm. That means that I my purpose is distorted. That means no way. it's not your purpose. Because <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that you are created to have money, have... Mm -hmm. Money is just a tool for you to accomplish your purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. And the thing about, well, purpose is about other people in the world and it's about generations to come. Identity is about yourself. Okay. So the minute that you know yourself, you are empowered about yourself, then you give yourself the room, the permission to be able to go out and help other people. Mm -hmm. Then you also give yourself, you, you also give the world permission to shine around you because you're no longer condoning mediocrity in yourself mm -hmm. and therefore not condoning mediocrity in other people. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, are there steps or stages that I have to go through for me to discover my purpose? I don't think there's like a manual. I don't think that there's this exact way that you have to follow. Mm -hmm. um, however, I do believe that there are tools to be able to help you to discover your purpose. There are some things that you would see and you will know I am this and I'm definitely not this. For example, there are things that you, and maybe ladies you can tell us, okay. um, there are things that anger you about society. There are things that make you, when you see this, when you see a certain situation, for example, maybe if you walk out and um, and Vika has a lot of trash, you feel nothing. Like, for you, that doesn't move you one bit. Mm -hmm. But if you see street children, it moves you, it breaks your heart. Yes. So then what exactly moves you? Maybe you can tell us about yourself. What moves you? Well, obviously, you know how to tell us about that. Oh, my, oh, my. Yeah. I think Angela can start. Mm -hmm. <sighs> what moves me? OK, um, with my surrounding, I think I, yes, on the step one about the street kids and uh, people with disabilities mm. and, of course, hygiene and also seeing people being you know just you know those two small glimpses you just walk around in town and then you get to see mm -hmm. someone is being mistreated someone is being mishandled someone yeah. is being talked to rudely yeah. and you know as much as you want to help you yeah. really can't get into other people's business yeah. and also with the pwds as much as you want to help you probably not in a position to help out as much as you'd like to right. so probably I'll, I'll say yes uh the street children especially the ones who are 
so obsessed with the drug um, into the drug ventures, right. the hygiene, money knows, and um, yeah, the being just being inhuman in public. I, I'm, not, I'm not I'm not supporting in private, but at the same time, being inhuman in public is stress as part. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it, I guess it's my turn. Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think what moves me would be uh, the trash that one really does move mm -hmm. me sometimes. Um, but mm, the thing that really does move me is seeing people sad. <laughs> when I see mm -hmm. people sad, it's just you know I don't. I would like to change the situation yeah. somehow. Mm -hmm. yeah, so mm -hmm. I think that's what moves me. Also, when I know that you're making bad decisions, mm -hmm. you know. I, I want to help you and I'm trying to, you know, talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, for me, I don't like to see helplessness. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see, especially when women are in a place where they feel there is nothing they can do about something. So maybe you're in an abusive relationship or you're in a serious financial crisis or, you know, I don't like to see helplessness. So those are small pointers. Mm -hmm because that is how you are wired inside. So those are small pointers as to how you can be able to discover your purpose. Now, when you combine that with other tools, for example, there are things that God has gifted you with. There are people who have been gifted, say, with um, administrative skills. There are people who have been gifted to talk, like <laughs> you. <laughs> there are people who have been gifted with art to be mm. able to draw mm. and to be able to paint emotions into art. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are different ways, uh, different giftings that God has placed. So if you infuse the things that break your heart about the world with your giftings, then that becomes something so beautiful because it's very deeply fulfilling, which is the other thing. There are things that you would do and they would really, really fulfill you. You would do them even without being paid. Yes. You would do them and you would probab probably find a way of making money from the thing that fulfills you wow. more than anybody else. Oh, which is the, the money patch will be more of a plus plus. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yes, yes. I mean, that's just profound because, you know, my pastor keeps saying that, <laughs> okay, my pastor keeps saying that um, money follows your assignment. Wow. Like in your place of your assignment, mm. provision is that, right? right? Yeah. yeah, that's like that's basically what you're saying. Yeah, when you found your purpose, mm. you, you wouldn't even be thinking money. Mm. You know, you're just thinking, I'm fulfilled. I want to do this. I'm changing the world. Yes, I want to ask on identity. Mm -hmm. Um, how do I discover my identity? I mean, I, 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 I mean, doesn't my identity come from my family mm. or my career? Mm -hmm. Of me being a girl. Okay. Um, in the world we are living in now, it's a very sensual world. It's sen um, sen sensualized okay. in such that our feelings take preeminence. So that what you feel you like begins to define you. The things that you see. So uh, we build our culture on social media, on the things that excite us, on mm -hmm. the things that give us a certain feeling, on something we can drink, on something we can, on how we look, on what <laughs> we wear, on the people we know, and then we begin to identify ourselves around those things. So we begin to identify ourselves around things that are fading away, and yet the intention from the beginning was for us to identify ourselves with our Creator. I believe that whatever that you, y y your definition comes from where you came from. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like, only the person that made you can be able to define you. And once that happens, once you, you begin to shift your eyes from the things that you can see to the things that are eternal and to see that God created me, God made me like this for a reason, I look like this for a reason, I'm from this family for a reason, then you're able to begin to uh, define yourself much more from God than from our surroundings. Yes. I'd like to say that um, many of us have serious identity issues, crises, because of our families. Many of us either had absentee parents mm -hmm. or parents that were not able to give us uh, the kind of love that we needed. Mm -hmm. But um, I believe that your parents gave you absolutely everything that you needed at conception. The minute that you are conceived and mm -hmm. delivered, your parents have given you everything that you need for you to succeed in life is yes. right there. Yes. The rest from there is in God. You just the minute that you put your your trust in Him and you begin to shift your eyes from 
this person didn't do this, this person was not there, this person, I didn't go to school, I didn't do this. All those were things that happened to us. And maybe we can talk about experiences um, and how they shape our, our purpose. All these are things that happened to me for the sake of my purpose. There is a greater architect than me. There is a greater architect than my parents. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So let's talk about what got you into the ministry. Okay. Um, well, I grew up in a Christian household. My parents are pastors, and I I was in church a lot. But I was forced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was forced. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but you know, like you had to go to church with your parents. <laughs> yes. So at some point, I said, the day I leave this house, I'm <laughs> never going to church again. Or until the day I left the house and found myself as a pastor. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Was it, was it a bad experience being told every day, every Sunday, the school, the school, the school? Boring. <laughs> completely boring. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened <laughs> is when I left home, I just decided I want to go out to the club, I want to have fun, you know, mm. I want to have friends who are hip and cool. I want to change how I dress. I just want to be less conservative yes, yes. and actually enjoy life because I thought I'm not enjoying my life at all. Mm -hmm. Um, and then slowly as as time went by, because you see, I, I think purpose like hunts you down. Purpose hunts you. You can do whatever <laughs> that you want to do, but at the end of the day, there's still something that's drawing you towards what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So slowly God just began to tug on my heart like, this is not for you, you know, this is just not for you, this is not for you. And slowly I began to just get tired and one day I just, I was done and back in church and in training for ministry and as soon as I, because before that I was trying all sorts of different things but as soon as I got back to my place I can't tell you the kind of fulfillment I've had. had. The truth is that I always I haven't always had money to do what I want to do in ministry. I always I haven't always had the friends or the resources as I would call them mm -hmm. but I have felt a great sense of fulfillment. I would rather uh, struggle in my assignment than struggle outside my assignment. I would mm -hmm. rather be fulfilled in my assignment because outside my assignment there is no fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Were there any challenges um, between you moving out and you actually now finding finding yourself as the very person you didn't want to become? Yes. Um, one of the struggles that I had for forever is depression. Like I really struggled with depression, mm -hmm. which was like a, a, a paradox or an oxymoron because I was a Christian, I loved God so much. I was taught that Christians don't experience some things. Mm -hmm. But now from the time I was in high school, I was consistently exp uh, uh, experiencing depression. But now once I left home, it hit a new, a nice new low. And this was the hardest bit for me because um, I think for me the money, not having the money or the resources was a big deal, but I think the depression was even that internal struggle was even the bigger deal because I felt I don't know where I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I should infuse in this world. If I live for 70 years, what will I be remembered for? If I do these things that I am doing right now, how will my life add up? So those are the challenges that I had in the beginning. Yeah, but eventually I was able to overcome mm -hmm. by God's grace. How did you overcome the depression? The depression, um, uh, I did go through therapy, I went through counseling, but much more is I came to discover that the truth is that there is there are forces that would rather you don't fulfill your purpose. There is uh, an, another push, you know, when you want to try and do what you want to do, there's always a resistance. And then to understand the actual existence of that resistance mm -hmm. helped me to fight back. To understand that the devil would rather you look down on yourself. He would rather that you get angry with the world. He would rather that you be a bitter person, mm -hmm. a, confused. A, a confused person, that whatever you project into the world is chaos, darkness, neediness, desperation. Mm -hmm. That's what the devil would want. So the minute you have that realization, then you can be able to push back. And I think knowing my identity helped because when I began to understand 
who I am, my calling, I began to understand I am a masterpiece. The Bible says that we are a masterpiece, the very, very best of mm -hmm. God's creation. Mm -hmm. When you begin to understand that you're a carrier of grace, that you're beautiful, that you're strong, that you're passionate, that even the things that people would think are weak. For example, I don't know if you've um, you've ever been in a situation where somebody says, oh, you're too emotional, or you're too pleased, mm -hmm. or you're too... And you know the world, you'd rather you contain those things about yourself. You know, like, yeah. when I think about it, when I was in high school, people would say, I'm too much, full of energy. Like, it's too know. much. It's too much. Like, turn it down, Victoria, turn it down. Is it? For real. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> for example, mm -hmm. every time, like, my friends would say, every time they called me, they had to put their phone like way over here. <laughs> I finished it and then they were okay, hi, how are you? <laughs> and they, I will kind of surprise. <laughs> wow. I will kind of surprise. You know? But of course yeah. with time you get to learn mm. the situations and handle yeah. yourself better. But that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, people that want to just tone you yeah, down. Yeah, you down. You tone you and down. Literally you don't even look any slight any slightly better than them at any point yes. in any form. Yes. Yeah. And those are not the forces that I'm seeing. They want to distort your image of yourself. And yet those are beautiful things. We need energy. energy. We do need energy we need in energy. this world. People are sad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we need some emotion. We can't all walk around because that was mine. I'm too emotional. I'm like, my emotions are just fine. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> it's where I am. So, yes. yeah. uh -huh. so remember, the devil will push, pull you down and mm -hmm. the devil will actually force you to do something wrong. And then the same, same devil will help you just flood the guilt yes. towards you. Exactly. Yeah. So he will you. aid you in, in doing the wrong yeah. thing and then he'll just push yeah. the guilt towards you. Yeah. Oh, and this conversation is just getting better. We will be right back. This is Focus TV. Straight to the point.